love singing and dancing. Hiya, folks! Hey, handsome. You looking for some rotten cotton? I'm a woman. That's okay. Yeah, that's even better. Got a good time for you. <laughs> We're gonna catch the bastards who did these murders. His bodies are gonna start piling up. You're one of the best damn cops I've ever seen. Oh, I'll have your badge for this. I'm in the fucking FBI. Oh yeah, what's that stand for? Fucking big idiot? <laughs> It gets crazy, I'm gonna go crazy as shit. It's not just a fantasy! God, are you all right? I ruptured my hymen. Is Phil Lamb? He's servicing a client. Is that what I think it is? Here I go, here I go, here I go, here I go, here I go. Jam, not what I meant to say. A um, crazy wild adventure featuring antics of all kinds. A sort of Roger Rabbit-esque R-rated snuff film involving sex and cows. What was it what we saw? Eighth grade. <laughs> that movie by Bo Burnham. What a dynamite character he is. Nope. Happy Time Murders. Now, what did you think? I'll be honest with you, I, I enjoyed it. I really did. I It's it's not perfect. It's certainly got problems, but uh, yeah. I, I really did have quite a, quite a bit of fun with it. It, it was enjoyable. To um to just see a movie made like this again, you know, with puppets, you know, yes. we, we saw the Dark Crystal earlier this year, and just seeing these, you know, real puppets and everything, and and, and uh, all the antics that they do with it, I was just I was happy watching it, you know. Yeah. It was just like, you know, I I wish we had more stuff like this, you know, made. I um, it's just a chuckler all the way through. Yeah. Well, for throughout most of it, it's a chuckler. Um. Yeah. There's a, Wheels there's, kind of fall off at the end. There's a few moments where yeah, it's we'll, like... We'll get into ah, that in the spoiler on. section but for sure. Yeah. If you're just looking for a at le very least okay, at its best, solid comedy. Yeah, raunchy comedy, yeah. It's a bad one to give a go. Yeah. And um, the, th the thing is, is that Brian Henson, uh, you know, the this idea had been like going around... Um, the Jim he was Henson shop. Pitching it around. Yeah, it had been that idea had been going around when his dad was alive for like ten years. So this movie has been in the making for uh, a long time. Yeah. And his son really made it uh, a crusade to get this movie made. I mean, I remember way back in uh, 2008 uh, when uh, there was a show called Attack of the Show. It was on G4 TV. I don't know if you ever watched it. I did not. I used to watch G4 TV because it had a video game show called Max Play. I really liked, but. With they, Bill Rulary? <laughs> no. But um, they talked about this show because it was like they were trying to get a green lens and like Jamie Foxx was attached and it just went into like development hell for yeah. years and years and so... Did like a certain studio buy it or they just like never... I don't think any studio really bought into it. I don't... I think it was so scary to them to green light it, you know, to green light a movie like this. I because, don't really get it. Like, it sounds like a... Well, you got to understand that we were... R-rated movies were just dead for years. And it was only PG-13. Like, our romantic comedies, you know, for a while. And then Judd Apatow kind of broke the... Reinvigorated uh, it. Yeah, the R-rated and, you know, Seth... And uh, so, you know, it looked like this movie was going to have to go ahead. And then it didn't. And I think... One of my biggest problems with the movie, Melissa McCarthy, I don't think this movie would have got green without her. I ruptured my hymen. I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest. I think she She got was it. my biggest problem in the movie, but it was yeah. only half as bad as you'd imagine. Yeah, she's not nearly as bad as, you know, it didn't... When like, she's not, like, giving stoop, just barking out 
really cliche um, exposition kind of thing, yeah. or her improv. Yeah. It, um, you know, it was fine. Yeah, I, uh, I a came in. too much, she's a man. They just kept going yeah, over that, it. Yeah, that was a, that was a bet that, you know, a couple times it, I, I, I liked it and then it, it wears out its You gotta room. keep it, keep it fresh. Give me, yeah, she looks yeah. like a man. I got it. <laughs> yeah, and, um, you know, I, I would definitely say that, yeah, that she, and there's a couple other actors that, like, like Joel McHale's in the movie and... Another he one, it got, it really went, it whoops, overstayed its welcome. Long. There's a bit that they keep, you know, redoing with, yeah. uh, and, uh, that, that didn't work for me. And Maya Ru uh, Rudolph, who I really do like, she was a little hit and miss for me. Again, it just was, she was fine, and then we spent a lot more time with her, and it yeah. sort of wore us down a little bit. It wasn't, like, when we spend more time with her, it's not like the whole time was bad, it's just, yeah. you know, a little moment that's like, alright, we got it. No way. Yeah, the thing is for me with the movie is that when it's completely focused on the puppets and kind of going into the dark, seedy world yeah, that was of the, the best puppets. Part. Oh, it's How so about fantastic. the scanners' headshots? Scanners head explosions. Oh yeah, it's great when when puppets get killed. I, I, that's one thing that I was wondering what they were going to do with it, and it's just giant, just stuffing explosion yeah, right It's a puppet. It's and it's fantastic. It's it just it's great. For some reason, they said it. No one else laughed but me. But for out of nowhere, Melissa McCarthy. I got a puppet. She's got a puppet liver. <laughs> that nearly made me chuckle. Like, oh, come yeah, on. That 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 was enjoyable. I, I did like that. The the way that you know they uh, they build the world. You know yes. that, that the puppets have their own hospitals, <laughs> and, and they the, just happen to be a few feet away. <laughs> right. And um, the the thing is, is that you know what you said earlier with Robert Roger Rabbit is is really apt here because Roger Rabbit was kind of doing that film noir kind of. Detective. Exactly, and this is what this is doing. Did you like the noir stuff there or here better? Oh, I, absolutely, and Roger Rabbit. Roger Rabbit's Robert, classic. Ro Robert Zemeckis was behind yeah. that one. Um, and listen, Brian Henson's a good director. He directed yeah. my two favorite Muppets movies. Uh, Muppet Treasure Island. Muppet Treasure Island, number one for me, and uh, Muppet Christmas Carol, which is great. Christmas Carol is probably mine. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, they're both fantastic, and I think they were made both within a year. At least a year or two, because yeah. either, we either got the VHS or we went and saw one or two yeah, of both them in of theaters. Them. I'm sure you, you watched them both so many yeah, times. We had, we had both yeah. of the tapes at some point. And so, he, you know, he knows what he's doing. And, and the cool thing about this... He knows this, how to craft a film. Yeah. How to craft a movie. Absolutely. And what's really great now is that, you know, back then, you know, we, we saw Dark Crystal and how the technology, they were limited. They had to do so much... There was only one or two times I was really blown away. Do you remember um, in the beginning when he's, like, beating some guy? Oh, his arms like, like, like cranking like right, crazy yeah. like they put a fucking piston in his arm the, the thing is is that back then they had to do so much work to hide the puppeteers you know yeah. and all the wires and in this they can re digitally remove the wires there was still a couple did you notice any moments where you could tell it was a person yeah uh well like when the when the puppet's like walking yeah I, it's obvious anytime that, it's a full body walking shot yeah it's obvious the puppet was there but the um, the puppeteer was completely in um, you know gr gr green clothing, yeah. so they could wipe him out. But it, it does work, you know. It didn't take me out of it completely. I noticed it, and I thought yeah. it was fine, you know. But uh, I I really I really hope Brian Henson gets to direct more movies because it's it's been I think a long time since he's. I to... do, but I just don't want it to just be R-rated comedy with puppets. No, every time. no, you know absolutely I mean? I not. To... I don't want to tell him what to do. Yeah, absolutely. I want. I want him. I hope. I'm hoping this is a success, and he gets to do more things, make more films, because I think he's really talented. I think you know the whole family. You know, mm. obviously, was very talented. We've been um, singing his praises. Give us some of your problems with the film. Well, like I said, you know, uh, Melissa McCarthy. <laughs> of 
at the time. Yeah, she, she, you know, she was good in some sections. You know, she was uneven. You know, Maya Rudolph, she was a bit one note with, you know, you know, the kind of, you know, secretary. Who's, yeah, we know exactly where this is going to end up. And, uh, you know, Joel McHale, he, he was just straight up fucking annoying. I'll just I like that at wish, first. I wish he wasn't in the movie. I, I'm not a big Joel McHale fan. I'm, I'm just not. Do you think that's probably helping your case, your argument right now, that you're not a fan of his to begin with? I'm not a fan of him, but I did like him on The Soup. I enjoyed what he did on The Soup. I thought he was fine, you know. So, you know, I mean, I don't completely hate him, but it's like he can be obnoxious to me. He, and that's his shtick. You know, he's playing an asshole. He's yeah, playing he's a being prick. a douchebag. That's his just M.O. Um, and, and I will say that that the direction that it goes in the third act, which we'll get to in spoilers, I, I was disappointed. I wanted I wanted them to focus more on the underbelly of kind of going into the seedy darkness. Yeah. I wanted it to be more dark. And it, it, it kind of goes away from that, you know. My biggest problem is they took the story too seriously. They didn't play around with it at all. You know what I mean? Like it was just a really generic noir inside of a R-rated vulgar comedy. It's it's like a parody of a noir, you know? Yeah, but they didn't push it really that far. That's what yeah. I'm saying. You should, could have done a lot more, you know? They could have. Aside from a few movie references. Yeah. I Like I said, I do. I love, you know, when, the, when they're in the porn shop in the beginning. It's just, it, I, I fucking love that. All the actors this, who are voicing Have you seen any of the trailers for this movie? Well, obviously, you know, I close my eyes for the trailers. They've played trailers on YouTube nonstop for the last, like, two, three, four weeks. A bunch of the real good jokes have have been ruined for me. 50 cents, I'll suck your dick. (laughs) He's servicing a client. Is that what I think it is? Here I go. Here I go. Here I go. Here I go. Yeah. That's the the problem with uh, uh, trailers for comedies. They just... They, you know, they tell all the jokes because like, they want to get people in the theater. Um, yeah, that's the you got it. trailers. But, I don't know. How else, how would you uh, make a preview for this? There was one where that's it was the like, thing is, you know, this movie is so, whoever the lead actor was, this movie is so vulgar. They can only, <laughs> we can't even show you anything in it. Yeah, well, actually, when I saw the mag, they, uh, they had a trailer in front of the mag. And it was just a puppet saying... This is not a kid's movie. Don't bring your kids to this. It's filled with sex, violence, language, and was all this. Was it written down? No, it was a, it was like a puppet talking. Okay. And uh, and that was that was really was funny. Was it Gooper? The messed up one? <laughs> I think so, yeah. I, I wish he was in more of the movie. I thought that I was Pat him. Oswald. It's not. It's. I, know, I was yeah, looking I at the so. cast. It's this uh, black actor, Kevin something, I think. Yeah, I think everyone who voices the Muppets are like legit voice actors. Yeah. Because Muppet, uh, they were Either really Muppet good. people or... Just, you know, voice actors. Yeah, and that, that's what I'll say is that the voice act is really good. Like, I, I think everyone was fantastic who, yeah. who voiced the puppets. Would you say um, probably the best acting came from the voice actors? Oh, 100%. 100%. Stanley Hudson was the lieutenant. He had this weird haircut. It was very, kind of felt awkward to me every time he was on screen. The, the main puppet? No, 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 no. The main lieutenant. The black dude. Oh, the black the from haircut. the office. Yeah, yeah. I really like him. I liked him. I like him, but he just seemed very weird to me in this really? one. Huh. I don't know. Yeah, I, I liked him as the comic relief, and it, it kind of brought me back to kind of those, you know, uh, the buddy cop movies where you know you got the. He main reminded boss, me of like an old you know. fat Danny Glover. Yeah, that's yeah, what I, I thought of when I saw him. Like or, he's the um, chief. Uh, the uh, the guy uh, from Die Hard. <laughs> the. Uh, the white guy. No, he the was... bl- no, the black guy. In the oh, wow. Yeah, the, 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 the... Family Matters yeah, guy. Yeah, Family Matters. Yeah, he, he reminds me of him a little. Carl Winslow. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I, I, like I said, I think everything involving the puppets is, is really good. And I don't think we've had a movie like this since Team America World Police, really. You know, I mean, I, I can't think of anything else that we've had. The sort uh, of um, kind of puppet. parody puppet. Yeah. Puppet I mean, even movie, puppet movie um... in general. Besides the Muppet movies. Um, I cannot. Yeah. I'm sure there's one, some shitty one out there. Someone's going to not leave in the comments because they're a dick. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll figure it out, hopefully, by the end of this video. Um. So, uh, what, what were the things that you really liked about it? It had jokes. It did. Melissa McCarthy wasn't infuriating the entire time. Or no. even infuriating 
the rest of the time, but it just was like, all right, get on with it. Yeah, I, I think, you know, the director kind of knew how to handle her, you know, kind of limit her for the most part. Because there, there are scenes specifically where you can tell she's improv and that's when I went, oh, man, eesh. Yeah. You know. Stick to the script, Yeah, exactly. Bitch. They've been working on this script for a long time, and, and I don't think... You know they needed that, but and I will say that I do. I think the twist you kind of see coming, yeah, uh, which well, was a bummer. For the me, one but... thing is though, yeah. Well, well wait a second yeah, we'll about the it. twist. Um, yeah. I guess this will be our little pre-spoiler Before. recommendation section. Um, see it if you don't want to pay money to see it. Wait till it comes out and get it from your library. Yeah, I mean, I think if you're into R-rated comedies, you know, just just the big. The big screen isn't really going to make it that big a difference. No, I but mean, it'd be I, nice. I, I would like people to support it. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, if you like R-rated comedies, I think it's a, it's a decent one. And if you like something that's just different, it's this, just doing something different. This or Action Point? Action Point. That's, I thought of that when I was watching it, and I was like, I did, I did like this. But for me, I think Action Point's a better movie. And I know critics are... Gonna call us, you know, like fucking morons for that. I still can't believe the critics yeah. hated Super Troopers too. Oh yeah, and action that. point. Yeah. Um, action points or happy time. Action point. Yeah, action point. Was Johnny Knoxville is our conductor. He, Melissa McCarthy is in this. Yeah, you know I don't think mean? there was anyone in an action point that was, you know, super like bad to me, like or like. Really I can't uneven. remember. Yeah, I can't remember yeah. any. But I mean, listen, I definitely want to rewatch this. Um, cause you're starting to miss some jokes. There's a couple yeah. of times where it was definitely too low or I just, <laughs> and there was definitely a guy behind us who, you know, he was loving the movie. He was fucking laughing as loud as can be at some um, of the most weird moments. I'm yeah. like, do I have a bad sense of humor? Yeah, some things hit people a certain way. You know? yeah, 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 yeah. And so, uh, you know, yeah, I would definitely recommend seeing it in the theater if you like already raunchy comedies and, um, you know, if you're a little kind of on the fence about it, then, you know, just, you know, rent it when it comes out. You know, check it out on Redbox. It's definitely worth a rental, 100%. So, yeah, definitely, I'd say at least worth the rent if you're yeah. not, like, a prude or anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, obviously. If It if, wasn't too, <laughs> would you say it was too rough, too sexual, or too no, violent? No, Because the only violence happens to puppets. inanimate puppets. Yeah, well, there is one scene uh, with Melissa McCarthy. It's a flashback scene, but... Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. The liver thing. But... Uh, for, for the most part, honestly, I wish they went more dark with it. I wish they went a little more violent, a little more risque. Yeah, you are um, rated R. Why not yeah. go for it? Because honestly, I felt like if you took out the swearing, this would be PG-13. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, but and I think the swearing And of the obvious sexual overtones. Yeah, but even that, I mean, like, can you... It's they they weren't puppet. naked it's puppets. It's a plush. They weren't naked puppets. That's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll go into the spoiler side. The um ending was incredibly here's here's my prognosis here's my diagnosis Dr. Rudy Lance quick home diagnosis The first 3 quarters 4 fifths of this movie you know, laugh here or there. Yeah. It's nice. It's not it's not uh, Death of Stalin or no. Super Troopers 2 or anything, but it's, you know, it's a nice little just below action point, I'd say. Maybe just yeah. a rung below that, but it's just yeah. a nice little then. I would agree. They sort of either throw the comedy, throw the jokes away and just try to, you know, end the plot. Yeah. And I'm like waiting for it to end like all right yeah it, 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 it had run its course by then and it's a 90 minute movie but then they stopped doing jokes though by the end of that it yeah. was just because it's trying to do it's like you know, action. yeah but it's, and not... it's not working you know it, it's um yeah the third act is just it's disappointing i think first of all like elizabeth banks not being dead was very obvious. It was me. obvious. No, very just based obvious. on the story, it's obvious. But when it happened, I'm like, wait, they can't bring her back. He walked away for two seconds. Would she run silently right. 20 yards away? And she totally disappears in the movie. I mean, she only gets hit in the head. You know, oh, yeah. Luggage, suitcase. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I didn't 
know that the girl who came into the office, the puppet girl, was... Even when we saw her purple pussy hair, I didn't think yeah, about it. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't either. I didn't I connect the ties with that, I will admit. Elizabeth Banks, I knew, was obvious. If they had, would have said before that. that purple hair is um, unique, they say it later on, right. like, after we find out that it's her... Carpet doesn't match the rug. That would have been maybe a better match. noir choice, yeah. have somebody say that earlier on. And before we see the purple pussy so just hair, kind of seed it into your head yeah, a little. like yeah. okay, purple hair is unique. Oh wait, you're not thinking about it again, but haha, purple hair. Yeah, yeah, and and I do, I did like the flashback scene. It, it does kind of echo kind of those cop movies. Oh yeah, it's n- dead yeah. on. Yeah, and it, it like I said, it's it's spot it's, on with this its is parody. like you know yeah. this cut really reminds me of Basic Instinct. It will obviously yeah the the interrogation scene for sure. Not just that, like. Yeah. The uh, main character, aside from him being kicked off the force, it's like the exact same backstory, mm-hmm. isn't it? He like shot the wrong person on accident, missing. But that's a normal cop thing when they got to give yeah, him a tortured past. Yeah, that's that's in a lot of the yeah. yeah. A lot Which of cliches nice. in the plot in this one. Yeah, but I think for the most part it's, they worked. I, yeah, I like it's them. not. This isn't a plot driven movie. It's a yeah. yeah it's laugh. It's You're just a jumping joke. off point. And and it was funny to me with the the title. I didn't know that it was about an, a TV show, the Happy Time Gang show. I thought that that was cool. That I thought of that. Gang I didn't think of killed. that at first, but I thought of that later because I'm like Happy Time Murders. Yeah, because I didn't. I didn't know like what the real plot was. I knew puppets were getting killed. I thought it'd be either yeah. all puppets, or that's when I thought it was all puppets and like maybe yeah. one Melissa McCarthy. So Katoa, who would you have cast in, in place of Melissa? Oof, man, you know it, it's tough. Because Honestly, I don't know if I would have liked Jamie Fox. No, I wouldn't either. Have either. When I heard he was announced, I was like, you know, but but honestly, for me, it was like I just want a green light. Just get yeah, this just fucking movie. See it. Um, it's about the puppets. You know, it, it could have been interesting to have someone like who's like a super serious actor in the role, like yeah. Liam Neeson or something. What about <laughs> you know? uh, the guy who played uh, Boondock Saints, the detective? Oh, Willem, Willem Dafoe. Dafoe. Yeah, that's not going to move the needle, but it would have been great. I that would have been really. That would have been a really solid choice. The thing is, is that would you have him completely play it straight, or because when William Dafoe goes Gonzo, it's pretty amazing too. Yeah, <laughs> you could have a little bit of each. You know what I mean? That would have been fun. I would have liked to see William Dafoe just in the movie How about, in general. Um, give me a fem- just great. to make it uh, tit for tat. Give me a female actress. Uh, you know, honestly, I mean, you you never get her, but someone like Meryl Streep. <laughs> like, Man. I honestly think I go. Could Meryl Streep really get down with the? It'd be like movie? Mama Mia or something. It yeah. just grow up wear thin way quicker. I I I mean, it depends. Meryl Streep can be really phenomenal, and uh, you know, I think maybe like Helen Mirren or something like that. Uh, I'm trying to think of someone younger. younger I'm trying to think actress. like comedians, like that one yeah, lady. Oh, just and... comedians of who? No, that's just what I was trying to think of. I'm thinking, like I said. No, I'm yeah, think, think of whoever you're thinking actors. best part. I'm having a really hard time thinking of a young actress who's, you know, fun, charismatic. Um, they're, they're, they're there. Uh, I, it's just that I don't know if they would really fit. You know, I mean, someone like Amy Adams I really like, uh, but I don't think she would work in this. As a, uh, not as a cop. No. Um, yeah, it, it, it's a tough thing to cast, honestly. Queen Latifah, circa 1999. <laughs> All right, bringing down the house with Steve Martin. I never right. saw that, still. Then, yeah, no. I saw it in the theater. Are you a shit? <laughs> Actually, I remember it not being really bad, honestly. The Queen is in the house. I love Steve Martin, but, you know. What, uh, were your, give me some more of your issues. You wanted it to be darker. Um, what sort of darker things would you like to have seen the puppets had blood maybe humans get no honestly the the stuffing worked for me uh but i just i I, when they go into kind of the crack den with goober and the you know they're drinking the maple syrup and stuff i like you know like we've mentioned details like that we've mentioned so many times like eight millimeter yeah. And I just, I love the just going down into the depths, the, yeah. of, the depravity. And so when they're in the strip clubs, it's great. You know, when they're in the sex shop and everything, it's just like that is like Except the gold for me. So it's because oh, it's, it's so great. subverted because there was one moment, I can't yeah. remember which, where uh, the lead puppets walking around and doing something normal and like 
normal for a movie like this. I'm like, and it made me laugh. So I'm like, it's a fucking puppet walking around with a gun <laughs> right, like, yeah. or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> but the thing is, is that I totally was in it. I was totally in the world. Like, I was Man. like, I'm in this world with those puppets. I love this, you know? I liked the world. I liked the puppets. So yeah, well, that's the thing. It's, the it's, story, though, it, it, that's... I do like the, the biggest attractor. For I, me. I do like the the whole idea of this game. Sh- uh, well, uh, this just TV show that was in syndication, like Sesame Street, like yeah. the Muppets, and they're if getting you will. killed. It's kind of a Brady Bunch, a little bit esque. And uh, the, his the the main cop's brother uh, is a star. I, I did like him that the whole Michael Jackson s thing of him bleaching yeah. his skin. He had a different nose. <laughs> he had a different nose. And uh, you really loved it when he got ripped apart. You were in the I love the dogs. I love the little... It was oh, a pug and like really, a little My Skip a little dog. Boston Tabor. A uh, Boston Terrier. Terrier when they bring him in. We we found the murderer. But uh, yeah, the, that was really funny when they, <laughs> they just grabbed the dog and we found the murderer. And, and I love the... I love, I love when... Uh, uh, and Melissa McCarthy sees the body. She's like, holy shit, he's been ripped to pieces. And but all of a sudden they start fighting. Uh, and then the she brother. bites his balls. Yeah, and she's like, I'm sorry. I mean, when I knew him, he, he was used fighting, to be bluer. He was fighting the cop, <laughs> who yeah. is the brother of the star of yeah. the Happy Time Murders who got ripped apart by cute little dogs. Yeah. And then when he just says, hey, fucking racist. It's like, <laughs> sorry, he used to be bluer. You know? <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck did you say? The, he, the timing um, of that was very his, good. The puppeteer, he, the yeah. puppet, and his uh, one-liners were solid. Yeah, like he, he and Melissa, great. Melissa McCarthy were sitting in the jail cell. Like, uh, oh, you're looking great. And then she's like, Yeah, never better. Blah blah blah. Yeah, I'll see you at my execution. <laughs> yeah, that was a good line too. Yeah, I'm so, working. Oh, I'll had... be working on your case. We had the evidence. <laughs> we had the evidence. It was but... lock solid, but it was incinerated. It's like, oh, that's great. Execution. <laughs> yeah, the, the one-liners were great. From the puppet. Uh, yeah, from the puppet. Melissa McCarthy's mainly consisted of she had a penis or looked like a man. Yeah. <laughs> the, I like the first one in the office when the um, Michael McDonald, I think his oh, name is. Oh, from Mad TV. I was going to bring he that says, up. He's um, great in this. I really His opening him. line to when we are greeted by his face is, I'm always happy to cooperate with the police, but I... I've never seen two police so manly and unkempt. Uh, masculine. Masculine unkempt. and unkempt. Yeah. Excuse me, sir. I am not unkempt. <laughs> I knew where it was going as soon right, as he said exactly, it. Exactly, right. You're the masculine one. That was the first one, maybe? Yeah. So it, it really worked, but yeah, they really he, rode it into the ground. I'm a very big fan of him. Uh, I, he was what great other on movies Mad TV. have you been in besides he, Mad he, TV? He, he was in The Heat. He played the villain in The Heat. I watched it once. So I wasn't that impressed. I, I enjoyed the heat. I thought it was it was funny. It's not something I'd want to watch, you know, a bunch of times. But I enjoyed it for what it was. Um, and, and you know, he's someone that I I didn't know if he was going to be a bigger role in it. But they they tell you right away. Oh, he had no involvement with it because you, when you first see him, you're kind of like, oh, is he the one killing the puppets? Is he? It's a distraction, but, you know, they tell you right away that he, he has nothing to gain. He's not going to get any money yeah. from these puppets, you know. The um, Chinatown opening is the dead giveaway for the ending. It turns out that the lady, the red-haired puppet, is the daughter of the puppet who got killed by accident when he missed the shot. Her, her father got killed, yeah. Yeah, it ricochets off like a concrete beam right into his head. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny when that happened. See that that one, I I I, I didn't it didn't it, I didn't react to that as that is verbatim funny. like what happened in um what's it called? Because I was thinking of that. What's the move? Basic Instinct. I was thinking of it. Yeah. And then that exact thing happened. Really? He's the coked up that. ex-cop right. who's drunk. Yeah, when when that happened, I was actually like, "Oh shit, that's really sad that this puppet's." They dad played just it got really. Killed. They did. They played it really sad, but yeah, I, it worked I, I, I laughed yeah. through it. Yeah, I see. Found, that's the thing. I, is I think humor. people will find that really funny. Some people, you know. There's a lot of moments, serious moments like that, where I laughed because I'm like, "All right, it's puppets." <laughs> it's puppets. Yeah, right. You were really into it. You didn't really find any moments like that where it was like, hey, come on. Yeah, t- I mean, towards the end, like I said. The, like, once they once they go on their road trip, 
that's when it really started not working for me. When they're in the car and she shoots the radio and they go into that, you know, you see the inbred puppets and I was like, eh, this is kind of lame. I kind of saw that coming too. Yeah. Yeah. And when, and when their, their, their parents are killed. You could see in the mirror that one only had one eye. Yeah. One has one eye. The other one has three eyes. And, uh, it was just that. that just a throwaway work. joke that didn't land. Yeah, the, the whole inbred thing. Ah, they're they're cousins. You know, they fucked. They're married. You know, it's like eh. they made a really big deal of that, and then it was just that joke. Seeing the two cousins. Yeah, and they and they don't really do anything with it that much. Yeah, and uh, like I say, it ends kind of on a whimper, which is sad. But I think there's a lot of good stuff at the beginning. Is it better to burn out than to fade away? <sighs> My speaking of Michael McDonald. Whoa, listen to the music. So how'd you feel about the soundtrack? <laughs> Hit and miss. Yeah. I like the sort of cheesy, like, meme songs that they played. They played Never Gonna Give You Up, Rick Roll. They yeah, played, was, like, nice. yeah. You're My Best Friend, the Diane Warwick song. In That's the car, what they I shoot. The... It was, yeah, right. When it first started, I thought that was good. That um, was funny, yeah. A few other good songs. <laughs> there was the some gay Run the Jewels song that I fucking That's, thought was lame. Oh, all right. <laughs> what were your favorite parts of the soundtrack? And Obviously, when Ron the Jewels came on, I was like, "Oh man!" This Has he is like been in awesome. any other mainstream movies or even independent ones that you've heard? Ron the Jewels? Yeah. Oh well, it's a duo. Get that first, right? But yeah, uh, Baby Driver. Pardon me, Mister. <laughs> Get right, motherfucker. Um, but yeah, I've heard Ron the Jewels. It was in. In uh, two other movies, Sleepless, which is Stephen Powell's shit, don't ever watch it, with Jamie Foxx, ties into that, but uh, Baby Driver, they use um, the uh, the track from the first album, Run the Jewels. Is Sleepless the one where he says they got Tay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a song. Yeah, it's a remake of a French film, it's so fucking terrible. Did you see the French film? Yeah, and I wasn't impressed, all these girls okay. are sucking the dick of it, I was like, yeah, whatever. Well, what were the good as? just real quick, what were the good aspects of the French film? The good aspects, I mean, it, it was competently shot. <laughs> when was the French one released? I think 2010, okay. I want to say. Right. 2009, 2010. I just, I haven't seen any new, really good foreign movies. Yeah. It's tough, because you, it's either going to be artsy-fartsy crap. I love films Can't and artful films, but... Korean and Japanese is where to go, really. Nah. That's where you're going to get good action and crime movies. But, uh... Yeah, French is, it's it's just rough for me, real fucking rough French film. I've seen, I saw one that was a documentary style. I'm pissed I'm not going to remember the name for you guys. Um, it was like in the 90s. It was like a documentary team following around a serial killer. Man Bites Dog. Man Bites Dog. It was um, unnerving. It was Sundance, yeah. It was unnerving. I liked it. And it's, it's a black comedy. It was good. You liked it? Yeah, I wasn't a fan of it. But, um, do you have any more thoughts on, um, our happy time murder? No, I, no, I mean, I don't think we can go into the final scores. If we could remember, like, the rest of the jokes, we'd That's recite the them for you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very, if you're looking for a movie where there's rapid fire jokes. Yeah, there's a lot thrown at you, for sure. There's a lot of, it's gonna miss, but it's gonna be a few, quite a few that hit, yeah. I'm willing to bet. At least quite a few. I, I think there's definitely more heads than messes in the movie, for sure. Um, so I, I would definitely go with like a six on it. I enjoyed it. Um, I, I want to rewatch it. I think it was good. It's got problems, but, uh, you know, I think, I think three fourths of the movie I think is, is pretty good. Like really solid when it's with the puppets and then, you know, you know, it yeah. uh, falls off the rails. Yeah. As they it, say. it goes off the rails a little on the third act, which is the falls scary. off the track. Perhaps? And I think it only had like a $10 million budget. That's what it's been. Seriously, which the is the same. Credits were like twenty yeah. minutes long. I, I looked. I did look up a while ago, and I thought they got more money, but this had the same fucking budget as Slender Man. Yeah, how, but can you imagine how much puppet work? How many people had to work? How Absolutely. many hours went into just making the puppets yep. to do what they want them to do? And just the the sets for the puppets and everything, and yeah, it's it's great craftsmanship. So you know, kudos to the, the Jim Henson uh, team. Jim Creature Henson shop. Company and the, the Creature Shop, headed by Brian Henson, I would believe, yeah. but and probably his, wrong. No, yeah, and his sister uh, is a producer too on it. So it was a special thanks to a strange actress at the end. Hmm. I can't remember who it was. 
it's gonna piss me off. I'm like, why, why are they thanking her? I meant to mention it. This one, like I said, it's rapid fire jokes. You're gonna get hit every so often at the very least. Um, the story, I wish they just pushed the noir parody a little more and so just sort of referencing Basic Instinct, referencing a couple others, Chinatown, yeah, I can't remember a couple. Definitely got the Roger Rabbit vibe for it. Definitely a um, rated R Roger Rabbit that is not as not as polished, not as well thought out. Roger, Roger Rabbit's a classic. I would say... Yeah, I give it a give it a six. Yeah, it worked well enough. It's a chuckle movie. Just yeah. every so often, you're gonna at least get a chuckle. I was it, I was really just happy. You know, it was it was I was really happy seeing it, and I'm glad it turned out. It, it came out better than I thought. I was I was starting to get worried about it. You know, with Melissa McCarthy, but she wasn't as bad as I thought she was gonna be. Fifty so. fifty. Yeah, For, she was hitting this on sure. average. Fifty fifty. Yeah. Exposition dump or. What's it called? What do they say? Uh, freestyle. Yeah. Improv. Improv. Yeah. God damn, I'm losing my mind <laughs> yeah. tonight. What, um, are there any sort of parody noirs you can think of? Sort of a parody... Hmm. Roger Rabbit's really the yeah, only one Roger, that comes to mind. Yeah, Roger Rabbit is, is kind of the goal to I've never seen Cool World. Which I know came I've out watched like it when I was a kid, and I've tried watching it yeah, later like on a couple times. Eventually. I never made it past... It opens with Brad Pitt. Yeah, the same Brad Pitt. And then all of a sudden, okay, now we're with Gabriel Byrne. Really? Gabriel Byrne's in it? Yeah, he's the star. Really? Huh. That's... I did not know that. That's what threw me off about it, I think. I thought like Brad also, Pitt was always the lead, huh? I don't. I can't remember how it ends up, but right. Gabriel Byrne is uh, most of the beginning. Oh, I'll, have to, I'll have to see that eventually. It was on Netflix for a while. Um, yeah, if it was, I should It's from it. the mind of, like, some... The artist who I think made Fritz the Cat or something, maybe? Ralph Batsky? Or... Probably not. Some weird underground or subversive that artist. That was when, you know, movies like that were getting green lot. Sadly, like, you know. You can't push the envelope anymore, my friends. Yeah. People but, are I mean, too stupid. It's cool that this got made, you know. And yeah. I think I think success of, like, Deadpool... <laughs> probably helped this get made in some ways they uh, saw a rated r comedy could do well yeah well i mean that was kind of doing really weird shit yeah so but it, obviously melissa mccarthy's star power or whatever you know at least this one had noir movie references instead yeah. of comic books and, and, and I, fucking superhero yeah, movies and i did like the voiceover it really did work for me with them which is a staple it's, uh, of noir. It was good. It never really had me laughing too hard, I don't think. Did you ever say anything really super like it funny? Was it was just meant to be, be just standard mood, noir. Yeah. You know, the ambiance. Get that atmosphere going. And during bright, <laughs> broad daylight, though. They yeah. all came at, during broad daylight, I remember. Yeah, I think that probably has to do a lot with lighting the puppets and stuff. Maybe. Yeah. yeah, yeah, hiding stuff. Yeah. Um... Any re just random recommendations? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, we, we really recommended a lot of good stuff, you know, for people to watch earlier. You know, Roger Rabbit, you know, Dark Crystal we brought up, you know. Um, you can't go wrong with Labyrinth. Muppet Treasure Island. Christ Muppet Treasure Island. Muppet Christmas, uh, Carol. Muppet Christmas Carol. Labyrinth yeah. is like a lesser Dark Crystal. Steam, still haven't seen Labyrinth, I guess. Yeah. It's not bad. David Bowie is like Melissa McCarthy in this. <laughs> half bad, half good. Yeah. The um some of the put puppetry and effects are half bad, half good. Yeah. But you know, it's building a nice little world. The voice actors again are incredible. I love whoever the Scottish guy Sir, the girl! She's made it through the outer wall. I love his voice. Yeah. I don't know who he is, but I've heard his voice they many, were, many times. They were very good at casting the voice actors. There's people like there is such an extreme craft to that i think you know when you see like bad dubbing and like when you see like movies in the 90s like video games in the 90s yeah they weren't getting those voices yeah they just thought oh, we'll yeah. just give them get their americans and there's, get a show was giving them cheapo shit a massive craft to it and i have a tremendous amount of respect for her voice actors. well not only do you have to act but you have to act without anyone seeing you and your voice yeah matches and it's got to um, match yeah. the fucking camera or match the uh the the, the puppet the, 
the puppet or, or the, the animation, digital yeah. animation. Yeah. Yes. It's a lot harder, I guess, since digital animation has happened, like... Because they have to make the animation months and months and months and ahead years yeah. ahead of time. So yeah. you really have to just sit there and match the lips like perfectly. Yeah. That probably takes a lot away from uh, the acting in newer yeah. movies, I feel like. I'm sure it does. I mean, I think it depends on the animation. I think like with like Pixar and their 3D, it's probably a little different. Maybe but, like sort of a face capture kind of a thing. Yeah, I think they can match that, but yeah. And not at least, at least not for The Incredibles 1, because that's where I saw this information. Yeah. It was the voice actress for Violet. She, like, it was either a stand-in or her, and that showed her, like, doing it, like, 80 times in a row. And wow. they just had to stop. Like, her voice was fine, her acting was fine, but they just had to stop just because it. it didn't match. Wow. Yeah. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work that goes into this world, and a lot of work that comes out. Suck a dick, you fucking cocksuckers. Get fucked. Come back again. We love you all. Rudy Land and friends. Mm -hmm.